So this is an extension of my five sound design tips video. So if you haven't seen that, go watch it first. But basically, we're just going to be taking what I said about EQ in that video and breaking it down a little bit more. Now this video is going to start from the very basics. So it may be worth skipping ahead if you already have some background with EQs. I'll leave a time code on the screen and in the description that skips all the background stuff and goes straight into tips for using an EQ. So now let's break down what exactly an EQ is and what it does. Now, as you probably know, sounds exist in a frequency spectrum. Higher pitch sounds have higher frequencies and vice versa. To help demonstrate, here is a frequency analyzer. On the horizontal scale, you have the frequency of a sound from the lowest sound humans can hear, 20 hertz, to the highest sound, 20,000 hertz. The vertical scale shows how loud a sound is at that frequency. If I talk with a much higher voice, or a much lower voice, you could see that represented on the frequency spectrum. Now, as you can see from the analyzer, my voice doesn't sit at a single frequency. It has a bass frequency, and then it has several peaks rolling off from it. Those smaller peaks are called harmonics, and they're very important. Harmonics are the reason that different instruments sound different, even when playing the exact same note, and controlling them can drastically change the tone of a sound. Other aspects of a sound, like bouncing off the walls in a room, can also create other lower and higher pitched sounds that can be controlled to change the overall sound. All right, so now that we've got the fundamental idea of frequency down, actually explaining what an EQ does is very simple. So right here I've got an EQ, and as you can see, it has the same frequency analyzer as our last plugin did, but this time it has a line with different points. And as you can see, if I move those points around, uh, it changes the volume of my voice at different frequencies, altering the overall sound. You can look at the frequency spectrum to help understand how those changes are affecting a sound. If I boost the overall bottom of the spectrum, my voice starts to sound warmer. If I boost the overall top half, it makes my voice sound brighter. Boosting selectively around about 250 hertz makes my voice sound boxy or boomy, while cutting there makes it sound thin. Boosting around 4k hertz makes my voice sound harsh. Being able to listen and identify those changes is very valuable. So now we've got down what an EQ is and how it works, let's back up a little bit and talk about different types of EQs. The EQ that you've been seeing is a parametric EQ, but there are other types of EQs. The main other type is a graphic EQ, and here you can see one. Each slider on this spectrum is assigned a frequency, so for example, sliding this one will boost or cut at 200 Hz. You'll also see EQs like this with less controls. For example, this one, which has three broad controls which control the low end, the mid, and the high end. The middle frequency also has a selector which lets you control where you're changing the middle frequencies. Numbers are represented as thousands of hertz. Now that said, let's go back into our parametric EQ, because you won't see graphic EQs very often. Parametric EQs are much more precise and have a lot more controls and flexibility. Graphic EQs are generally only used in music because they emulate the sound of old physical EQs. Now right now we're looking at this second channel. On the bottom we can see three controls. The first is frequency, which controls what frequency we're changing. And right now you can see that I have it set to 400 hertz. Next is gain, which controls how much we're changing the frequency by. We can boost or cut by a certain amount. Lastly is the Q control. The Q refers to how wide your changes are. A smaller number means more drastic, broad changes, while a bigger number represents uh, more precise and surgical changes, and you can see all of those represented visually by this yellow line. Now that EQ point was actually set as a bell EQ, which is so called because the shape looks somewhat like a bell. Now our first EQ point here is set to be a shelf EQ, which you can see by this button right here. A shelf EQ looks like a, well, a shelf, and it makes changes to all frequencies above or below a certain point. If we raise or lower the gain, you can see that change. And our EQ control now changes how steep our shelf is. Now the last type of control we'll look at is the high pass and low pass. So called because a high pass lets everything higher than the frequency pass and the low pass lets everything lower than the frequency pass. Over here we can enable our high pass, which cuts everything below the frequency. 
Uh, we also have our slope control, which controls how steep or aggressive the cutoff is. High and low pass controls are the basis of the telephone effect. One other control worth pointing out, since you may see it, is gain. The gain very simply controls the overall gain of the sound. This is useful since if you make lots of cuts or boosts, you may need to balance the sound back out. Okay, so now that we understand what an EQ is, how it works, and what all the controls are, let's break down some useful ways you can use an EQ in your sound design. The first technique is something that I mentioned in the previous sound design video, slotting. Slotting refers to putting each sound in its own slot in the frequency spectrum. For example, let's say I have the sound effect of a footstep and a door closing. Now the default effects sound very similar. But if I boost one of them at the high end to make it brighter and boost the other at the low end to make it warmer, I can separate the sounds to make them easier to distinguish from one another. Now another technique is sweeping. Sweeping just means taking your EQ control and boosting heavily with a narrow Q, then sweeping across the frequency spectrum. The goal is to find sounds at certain frequencies that you either like or don't like. Once you find a sound you don't like, you can cut it there to make it less noticeable, or boost a sound you do like. The goal here is to simply make everything sound as pleasing as possible. Although when doing this, you should give precedence to slotting, since having everything sound good together is more important than having each sound individually sounding as good as possible. Now, going back to the high pass and low pass controls we talked about, there are several things you can do with those. For starters, like I mentioned, aggressively cutting with both will make something sound like it's coming through a telephone. Using an aggressive low pass can also make something sound like it's coming through an object, for example a door, since lower frequencies travel through objects more easily. You can also use high pass or low pass to make a sound more subtle if it's too distracting in your mix. So that's the basics of using an EQ. There's a lot more tips and ways to use an EQ out there, but these tips should be enough to get you started, and possibly even on your way to coming up with your own tricks once you start playing around with the sound. If you're looking for an EQ plugin to get started, I'll link all the ones I used in this video, as well as a couple more in the description. Most of them are free, so download them and get started mixing. But anyway, that is it for this video. If you found this video useful, if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button.